really, we were thinking about um, not converting that raw water line to a finished water pipe. I said, well, I didn't even think about having two new lines, one heading south from the plant, the other one heading north from the plant, coming down the pit of Pleasant Street. That was the original concept. The yellow one headed south and come down the steps or tie you in down here for a wall. At the corner. So that, that was the original plan. Okay. And Jerry Niger brought that up and we looked at the pipe and the pipe is a uh, very thick wall, ductile iron pipe. The ductile iron pipe is much thinner today than it was back then. You know, just an engineering thing. Engineers are pretty conservative a lot. And that was in the early stages of just switching from the old cast iron to ductile iron pipe. And so the wall thicknesses were as thick as cast iron pipes. Even though it's much better metallurgically, ductile iron pipe is much stronger. Much more stronger, much durable, cement line, oh, it's all good stuff. And I checked, and it was all pressure tested at 150 psi, as I recall, 100 to 150 psi. Well, that's and, and it was it was meant to carry that type of pressure. As a raw water line, it had 30, 40 psi max on it, much much smaller. Well, it's just gravity from the outweight reservoir of the plant. So, you know, it just didn't have that kind of pressure. But still, the pipe was built for that. Now, the only problem is, over the years, nobody's maintained it, and it's all grown, most of it's woods. The first, the first section coming from the plant, halfway to the US 30, that's a field. Beyond that, you're in and out of the woods all over. It's a nice yes. walk, you ought to do it. <laughs> That's right next to the river for the most part. For the it's most part, it is paralleling the river. You can hear the river as you walk by. Okay. Now, along with, if we were to go that way, if you were to do that, if you see these two, there's two, two um, bull marks there on each side of US 30, there's two, one on each side of the railroad tracks that you can see, and there's one more set right there beside the water. Each of those dots are interconnection between the newer 24 inch and the old 18 inch. There's an old, the original pipe coming from the original two reservoirs. They use that 18 inch pipe. That's not good pipe. Anyway, that's old cast iron stuff. But they had the internet, interconnection. So they could use both pipes, isolate segments and everything else. To make the conversion, <laughs> you have to get at all of these points. One on each side of 30, one on each side of the railroad tracks all by the lagoon, and then on the east side of the tracks by the uh, old water track. And you have to eliminate those connections. So they're going to have to go in there, tear up a piece of pipe, remove the connection between the 24 and the 18 inch all the way through, but we'll totally be in that 18 inch. Contractor has to do that. And that's what they did, and that's what they agreed to do. But in order to get there, that becomes the issue. And I guess, now Rob found the easements for the pipe. I don't know if that included access to the pipe. I, I thought it did, but I, I wouldn't. Sorry, I'd sure. want to verify it. It's never, it hasn't been exercised in forever. The distribution crews, they, they, they will actually park along US 30 to get at the valves on each side of 30. They can go down to the lagoons and get at this section and on each side of the railroad tracks down there. The one on the, I don't know how you get the one for railroad. On the other side of the railroad by the water plant. I, I guess they're going to carry everything else, but I don't know. But there's no, there's no good access to that. If the river's really low and they took a track hoe and had the bucket out, they could go under if they drove on the riverbed. <laughs> but that's really the only reasonable way to get there. So anyway, that becomes an issue. So, and then in the future to get at the pipe, um, unless you go through and actually remove all the trees on top of the pipe, which should have been maintained back in the 70s, but it never was, that, that is the issue to get through the next. <clears throat> now, as part of the construction of the new plant, we did have to core 
they call it a cookie, we actually cord uh, a piece of the pipe out. So this 24 inch pipe, we did remove it. We had to make a tie in there to make this connection. The pipe looked as good as the day it was put in the ground. The exterior was nice and black. Everything looked perfect about that pipe. Pulled out the coupon, and of course that's eight inches in diameter. You look at that, the cement linings there, anything we could see inside the pipe up and down was clean. The cement lining had, was stained brown. But that had brown stain on it. That's just because of the water has been carried through. It, it was, a, it, you know, basically the river water. Anyway, so that's the only thing that was wrong. And they ran a video line 300 and some odd feet or something like it, whatever it was. And they really didn't see anything wrong there. I mean, there was some dips in the pipes, but it's a pressure pipe, so it's, it's pretty common. They could have put it into the trenches for crying out loud. So, you know, that's pretty common. But that's the issue. If you get, if they get clean, if they get the interconnections removed and put in right, and the blow off valves and everything, <clears throat> there's still always that issue about the pipes. That pipe being underneath, shoot, they're, they're full mature, mature hardwood trees now. So that's the issue with that, getting access and the trees. Now, if you want to go down through there or open that up, make a light path out of it or something, it would be ideal. But that's a lot. That's 10,000 some feet. So, it is. That was a fly at one time, but it never happened. Finding grants for these types of things is even far bigger. So, then it, 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 so the other, there are alternatives to do that. <clears throat> I mean, if indeed that's not the way to go, obviously we got a big price for that. The other things to do would be to come from the plant and head north, and it's only three, four, 400 feet from the plant to get to Plymouth Street, they were 98. And then run the line just following Plymouth Street all the way into town. That, that's the ultimate. Because going the other way, we got that covered. So, anyway, so, so that's but a big thing here. On, on the map, though, you see that red X. That's where we can tie in. Mm -hmm. the, we were first looking at a 12, but if something happened to the 18 that feeds the south end, mm -hmm. a 12 wouldn't suffice. Right. So we'd have to look at a 16 inch go down to a 12 and then we get to the other side, there's the line that runs to the crossroads. So we could actually maybe hook onto that and hit, go straight to the top. And that would all be just like farm field or whatever. And we already go through part of it. So there should be a need there to do that. So it's just another alternative um, that we could look at and we could maybe spread it out over a couple of years and do it ourselves. I didn't have any, so Jeff and I didn't talk about this beforehand, so I took it upon myself. This is just a little bit bigger map. So west of the tracks, what size line is that? Well, it goes down to, I think, an 8. Oh, okay. But then when it goes north to Crossroads, yeah. I do believe it's a 12. So just talking to Gary before the meeting, he said that that would, that would be the town. Even though you go down to an 8 and you go back up to a 12, and then we might do a 16 to the top. But that would help the north end, and that would help crossroads if there's any future development here. Because right now we're feeding everything through the south end of the town, which, you know, to get to the north tower, we haven't got any problem with any kind of pressure or anything, but if someone would move into crossroads, I'm sure they'll want a certain PSI that they're building. So anyway, <clears throat> one way to do it, I mean, Jeff was talking about running a 12 inch and all that. The way to get the full plant capacity, so that you'd have a fully redundant line. If, if the one that's installed now, the 18 inch heading south on the um, beach road, if that were to break, right now, you're going to live with the water in the tanks assuming you don't run it out the pipe that's broken and you're done. Mm -hmm. so, uh, that's it. But this gives you, to do the full redundancy, you're talking about starting at the plant, and now I ran a 24 inch, six, it takes at least a 16 inch. And then you run the 16 inch 
all the way, probably could connect here with the 12 inch, but then you're going to have to run the 16 inch on in the top. You, you need to get into some better pipes. Unfortunately, the first pipes you run into in there are all six inch pipes. So that doesn't cut. I mean, you need a 16 inch. And I have no clue how many six inch pipes it takes to make a, a six inch pipe to make a 16. Six or seven, <laughs> something like that. It takes a lot of six inch pipe to equal the same carrier capacity as 16. That's why we're continuing on into the town a little bit further. We're coming down in, um, down 98 and just down uh, Plymouth Street, and then that's the yellow line, and then I got a blue line there with the 12, and then ultimately that's connecting to a 12 inch pipe. There's the bottom end of that, the lower left. Those are, those are existing, there's an existing stretch of 12 inch pipe. And, and I, to be honest, I don't know if somebody had a plan to run more 12 inch pipe or something. Ultimately, long term, maybe something to run it up to the elevated tank there. I don't know. I, I don't know what, what the pass was. But in order to do it, you need a 16 inch pipe. That gives you the full redundancy doubt. How exactly you can get into town, I mean, I actually, another way to do it is just come down the tracks and tie it into the old pipe, the old, down by the old plant. That's another alternative as well. That would be the full redundancy. That's also the cost part. Market part. You know, I'm just thinking out loud, you know, We've been wanting to try to help those people that own all that property out there, you know, east of the railroad tracks and, and for future development. That might be the, the best alternative for us to see if we can find money from maybe Reorden McLean and, and uh, our economic development person uh, that's with the county. Gary? Gary. I mean, development wise, that might be just uh, the cat's meow yeah, there running down Plymouth Street, down Route 98. First, when you talk about the, where, where, are you, where do you mean when you say east? Well, I'm saying from north of the water treatment plant, running right down Route 98 west. Gotcha. You're, you're picking up all that uh, all that area that there's no water and, and there's you know there's property sitting out there that's doing nothing and, and then we've been approached a number of times by that uh, business person that uh, you know he's been wanting water for and sewer or Cyrus Hire that owns all that property. Yeah, we had talked to him about the sewer and what he had to do to put it in, and then we did talk to him about the water. But um, I think the way he, when we talked to him the last time, it was he liked to put in, but he wasn't going to tap it right now. He wanted it there to sell it. So, but if we came that way, it would be there. It would be, you know, for economically. Right. Like I said, it could be something we could put in ourselves. It just would take longer because, you know, we're not going to be able to dedicate just that's all we're going to do in that department with four people. So. If we looked at numbers <coughs> as to how much the difference would be to do the two things that needed to be done with the red line here to take that one that we currently have, get it ready, as opposed to doing a whole brand new one. I mean, it, it seems if it's if it's cheaper to fix up what we already have, why would we spend the extra money, that much extra money, to do um, a whole new line? I realized that, I mean, you said today, and you were talking about that that was something you felt that uh, the city could take on themselves and do it over a period of time. It wouldn't be something that would be done uh, in six months or eight months, but would be uh, maybe a project that would take at least a year. Uh, I'd say at least at least a year. Yeah. There, there, there is a, a part C that I talked to Lynn Kieber about our OPWC funding for next year. And would it be possible to, since this is a raw water line, 
typically you can qualify being based on that you're replacing a line. So technically we are. So there might be some funding there that whether we get a grant or we could take our OPWC share next year, we may maybe pay for half of it um, up front and we wouldn't have to borrow that money. Um, or we could look at the money we have in the Waterworks Replacement Fund that I've talked to Joyce about. You know, we could eventually maybe fund that somehow, but Lynn was going to get with Tom Kirkbride from OPWC just to see how we would qualify, if that would qualify for a project since we're replacing a raw water. So that's kind of a little different situation than a water line on wood lawn or anything like that. Can that 400 feet be qualified to help for water line expansion? You, you have yeah. to run the water line to Route 98 if you ever want right. to go north or go east or whatever yeah. way you want to go with the future water line. You know that would be that would be your investment, the city's investment. And then that's economically again. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. Um, but I, I asked, I told Gary, but I asked Lynn to come to the next meeting to find out what he finds out from Donna. Because then we also want to talk about Stetzer and Sulphur and the money we have based off what we do with this project and how we take this water line and how we spend that money that we got some money sitting there now that we could put towards Stetzer and Sulphur Springs and he's checking on that. Seeing how it's two different townships, we might be able to get a grant there. No, definitely zero percent money is going to be available, but I, 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 I'm trying to stay away from our what is your confidence in the current line, the raw water line? That put your right on that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think it worked. I never would have. Okay. Would have followed through. Okay. I have a question, Bruce. Yeah, right. I, I think it's fine. It's just, it's just the, the access is. Yeah. Um, when you're drawing here on this bigger map you showed us, you got the 16 inch line coming down 98 from the new water plant to the railroad mm -hmm. tracks, and then you actually have another drawing where you took a 12 inch line down to the overall 24 inch line. Is that another option that we can, uh, or was that just kind of just drawing and thinking? Or? Which map are you looking at? I'm looking at this one right here. Uh, you got the line. Yeah. So you're going from there right down to. Right, it down to the raw water. I think this guy's already in. It's just short. We're about, we're about five feet short at this point. Right. It's already installed. Right. So we, we did this and this as part of the water plant project. Okay. This is installed across the railroad tracks tied into that 8 inch. And it was 12. Okay. So this is all in place. How hard would it be, I guess? I mean, because all these trees and everything that you're running into making it you know, hard to get to that raw water line, would it be, I guess, how difficult is it to get to that section of raw water line to tie into that? Yeah, you'd be cutting it better in half. Half the distance. Yeah. 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 Well, along the railroad tracks is easy. Okay. Because they literally, that's how they get to the lagoon. Okay. Because off of 98 is railroad tracks and all the way to the railroad tracks. Are, okay. There must be an agreement with, with with the railroad to do that. I thought I believe they did it. I would presume so. They're using it for years. Right. So, yeah. 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 So, yeah. So getting getting along there is not the problem. Okay. The real problem is getting getting here. Right. This this is the tough one. Unless it would not like you to go off <laughs> Off, off the interstate right, the road right. and go through the fence to get out. The only reason why I see that the, the existing raw water line to me is, oh, make it happen and still use this is because, well, that's part of our opportunity zone. Sure. So, you know, you're talking about future development in those areas and people investing money. So, I mean, that's another thought to take into consideration there, too. I do love the idea of it coming down 98 because I agree with Bruce that that makes it easier for us to, you know, expand out further with our water system. And I mean, as far as getting out of all those tree issues and everything, I mean, I, I would say monetarily wise, it's probably going to be the cheaper option because it's just trying to get through them trees and dealing with digging them up or getting them out of the way to get to the raw water line. But 
And what would that cost be to do all those trees? Right, that's what I'm saying. So coming down 98 has got to be cheaper than going through all the trees to get to the existing raw water line. But I just, I hate to lose that section from basically east of Route 30 because that's right in our opportunity zone right there. And I hate to not have a water line out there. Right. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. It, it, the tree across the street that was a mature maple tree that we took out and got the stump out, it was 1500 bucks. So. I don't know how many mature trees there are. So right. Yeah, if you have a hundred mature trees, you know, probably hundred fifty, probably more than that. Right. Even. That doesn't include the small ones with the brush. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it probably, you know, I'm. Gonna throw I don't know if you'd log actually use them for timber. It, that's that's right. I was just going to suggest yeah. you could sell. You could if they're not sure. They don't. You know, the stumps are. The stumps are, are, the stumps are going to be. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, Go ahead. So, uh, Jeff, was the original plan to use the old water, raw water line? Yes, yeah, this started way back when, in 2010, 11, or 12, whenever right. it started. It was to use it, but as as we put it out the bed and we sat in the pre-con meeting, I, it just, it scared me. And I wanted you guys to be aware of what we could run into coming through the woods to Grandma's house, as I did say. <laughs> you know, that we would actually what happens if we get a leak back there and we haven't cleared that out? Then, right. yeah, we still have the redundant line, the 18 coming in Beach Grove, and we're fine, but just getting to it and then fixing it and making a path to get back there so it is open, I, I just thought the expense, you know, maybe it weren't to look at coming up 98 to go east and west. So that area that the raw water line runs along, I mean, it, it comes right from the, you know, old water treatment plant that runs through this woods to the new. I mean, we've been talking about bike paths. Is there any possibility of this, you know, being combined as a bike path grant, uh, ODNR, and, you know, using some kind of creative uh, process to get an ODNR grant to clear that ground in, the process of clearing for a bike path from the old to the new. Mm -hmm. Mr. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, we applied for a grant, a second grant there, uh, for a $500,000 grant. Um, you know, it would take us, you know, we would have to get the grant. They're competitive, but it would right. probably take us, you know, five or ten years, let's say, by the use of grants. Um, what might be a better way to do that is if that's the way the council decides to go, is to, you know, get the cost of it and just have, a, have some kind of a capital campaign in the city and, and raise the money that way. Yeah, I'm just thinking that, I mean, I don't know how much it's gonna cost. What, what kind of, do you have a, any kind of a ballpark idea of what we're talking about in terms of cost of clearing and using the existing versus taking the alternate route down 98, kind of taking the clearer path. The only cost we have right now is to clean the line and put the butterfly valves in. Okay. And they have to clear out their spots to do that. And then we've got those spots. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. Cool. yeah. That's so not And that, that's roughly $184,500. Okay. But that's nothing. But that's not including clearing the path. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Or any repairs if, if anything goes wrong. Sure. Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't that have to be pressure tested again? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not the chlorine. Yeah, no, no chlorinated cleaning. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They chlorinated, but yeah, right. They have yeah. 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 Okay, I got Doug, then I got Mark. Go ahead, Doug. If we don't use the raw water line currently right now, is it still able to be possibly in say five or ten years able to be tapped into and used to get at a later time? No reason not to do it. It's, it's capped today. Those things are a valve done by the water plant. This valve that's closed. It's not going anywhere. All right. <clears throat> How much would it cost? I mean, what is the today's price for that 24-inch line that we ran and? It would cost significantly more for us to run a 24 inch line that we already have, correct? I mean, a lot more than that eight, 16 inch line you got going down 
98. But the 16, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying. Be on YouTube, we, we, we got almost, almost yeah, yeah, the 24 inch. Yeah. We got quite a bit of difference. I mean, that's a lot of pipe there mm -hmm. for eight inch more pipe can haul a lot more water and and it's already there. I mean, how much is it going to cost ballpark to run that line down 98? The 16 inch line that's on the plan. Give or, I'm not holding it. That's a ballpark. A ballpark? If we put it in, you're probably put me in the state. 750 to a million. Okay, and we're talking. That's if we're going to run it so we can feed that tower. Correct. Yeah. I, now, this line that's already here, we're talking, you said 180,000. Yeah, 185,000. Okay, that's just to get those spots over. So we're talking maybe another half a million, just a guess. And we already got the line there. And we, if we're saying a million dollars, like I said, we're, we're a half a million, we're saving a half a million dollars by clearing that. I'm, and that's just a guess. I have no idea. Still, it's already there. I hate to see us put a whole other line in that. And that's just an idea. I don't know, right? We'd have to get prices and costs. And well, and that's why we're here tonight. Because I, I wanted you guys to be aware of all the different avenues that we could look at. And but also give us the guidance which way to go. Sure. One other question. The water line, we have easement right, but that is all private property, correct? That is not public owned, that's not government owned property, as in um, the Sandusky River is not government owned or doesn't have a right of way for it. Am I correct? No, but look, there, as far as I know, there's already easements in place for all of this. <coughs> right, but I mean, it. We're, it's still, we, you know, I'm just saying, it, it's still going through private property. And to put a bike path in, it's a whole different ball game for private property to get easement rights other than to access. Am I right or wrong? It's all owned by one property owner, though. Yeah, and Rich has already said he could do it. Yeah, Richard Carpenter. Yeah, Rich yeah. Is, I, I'm just, but I'm just saying. It's a, just an idea. I don't know. I'm, I think it's feasible. It would be, in my opinion, more feasible once we get figures. We got to get actual figures. Get that. Then to put another line in. That's my idea. Go ahead, Kurt. If the woods was to be cleared, how wide of a path of a clearing would you need going through that woods? Enough to get a vehicle through. Like 20 feet? More than likely, the easement probably has a 20-foot permanent easement and a 40, 50-foot construction easement. They're going to be limited to at least probably 20-foot maximum. You, can't, you, you wouldn't be able to go beyond the permanent easement. From a practical standpoint, if you're re really right beside the, the, the pipe or whatever, they, they need a you need a large enough path to be able to drive a backhoe and a small dump truck down it. I mean, to be honest, so you ten foot ten foot of pavement would be bare minimum, whether it's just gravel or, or asphalt, as, as long as you have a couple of foot on each side for your rears and everything. Clearing the woods is a much different process than calling your local tree trimmer and saying, "Hey, I got a." Big walnut out in my front yard. I'd like to have taken right. down. And um, is there any possibility we could possibly get a quote on clearing that woods? So we got better numbers here to work with. Certainly. Mm -hmm. Why don't they get a yes. quote then? It's about two miles. Yeah, a mile and a half. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. <coughs> is, is cleaning this line and bid and accepting all that? Yeah, we actually asked him for a little more time to make a decision on it, and he was fine. 
because uh, he was the one when we met, he was worried about numerous issues. Um, so he was fine that we didn't start right away. So he would be okay to come back in the fall and do it. So. Right, so for 184,500 you start cleaning this line. Mm -hmm. He cleaned the line and put the valves in that is required by the bid. I don't know. Go ahead, Mayor. That's what he's going to do. Yeah, it, the line might break 10 years down the road or whatever, but I understand that. But let's get this chair. Um, Gary, question for you. I know we've talked about um, is the uh, is the concept of a redundant line is that would you say it's a hundred percent uh, you know, used throughout the state? Do most entities our size have a redundant line or do they just have one line? Anywhere where you're seeing a water plant distant, just distant from the, the town proper, I don't know of a single one that doesn't have two lines leaving the plant to get to the town. It's that so. Sometimes if you're right in town proper and you only have to go a single pipe from, from the plant, 40, 50, 80 feet or something, yeah, once in a while you see that in, in a smaller village. Anybody of any size, bad too. Everybody? Just one, one other question here, is to, just to make sure that I understand that this blue on your map, this blue line that comes down and sort of does that little jiggy joggy thing, is this already existing? That is, all that is already yes. existing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So because we do have water to the east of the railroad tracks. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that is, there is water that's already mm -hmm. in there. And then this one uh, that, that's going north. Uh, and the tower is right here, correct? And I think this is, is this all carpenter property up here too, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure. I know this part here is. I would, I would yeah. assume so. Right? That's the shadow of the tower yeah. right there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said I would assume so. Yeah. Where he lives. Yes. I don't know. Because they've got that woods back behind where he and Jim both live. Yeah. And, um, okay. So that's already installed, that piece. So it wouldn't take much to get from here over to the tower. But we don't really need to go directly to the tower. We can feed it into lines that are currently there to get to the tower. But they're all six inch. They're all six inch on the, on the street, except it's either Winger or Maple has a 12 inch. Yeah, there's this one 12 inch right here. It goes to the tower. Yeah. Okay. yeah. You made a statement all that to the west of that railroad tracks is inadequate because of the six inch lines. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an improvement over what you have, but it's not it's not the full redundancy that we're talking about. Well, I just have a question for you kind of on this on these two options. It seems kind of like you're kind of leaning toward the new line running down 98 because it kind of keep because it keeps us out of the wood literally out of the woods uh, <laughs> and uh, we aren't going to be trying to clear you know big trees in the event that a pipe breaks in the middle of the woods somewhere and we can't get it and we have a long-term bigger problem with access and then we i think also have to constantly keep that path cleared which is a lot of maintenance and upkeep. I mean, maybe I'm reading you wrong, but I, is that with, would you agree with that? Is that your kind of position on the one line option versus the other? I'm supposed to be totally unbiased. Uh, I mean, I'm looking, for, I'm looking for the engineer's, uh, what's the engineer's mentality here? The mentality is you have pipes far older than 40 years in your yep. system. And most of them probably give you no problems or they be on the slate to be replaced. Yeah. It's not uncommon to have cast iron pipe in the ground over 100 years. It is not uncommon at all. And ductile iron pipe is far superior to the cast iron pipe. So there's nothing wrong with pipe. Not a thing. Okay. So. 
Congress pay a lot less expenses. Who has logging rights to that path? To is it is the carpenter, Mr. Carpenter? If we were to log that out, is he entitled to any of the trees that are Absolutely. worth you money? Sorry, I think we'd have to look at the easement, Kurt. I'm, what all was in it when, when it was broke back in the I 70s. have to contort that as being a maintenance item, which I can certainly sign and seal anything that says for the maintenance of that pipe, the tree should be removed. So, and it'd be the city's. But, but I was, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, the, uh, the price of the trees that we, that we have removed, whether a thousand or fifteen hundred dollars, that's with them keeping the wood. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's still going to cost you. I mean, with a large uh, quantity of trees, we might get a better deal. But it's, you're looking at, Chop with some big trees as well as you the bush hog and then having to put stone down. Um, you know. So it's but they're not gonna have to not, pardon me, I'm not they don't have to worry about removing the stump with a stump remover, they can bulldoze it out. I mean bulldoze a big stump? I don't think so. <laughs> and how they clear these woods for when they put thirty in, they they didn't stop, they just went right through. But that's what I was. That's what I was going to say. I mean, ultimately, I can I understand what you're you're saying, Mayor. But I mean, if you're talking one tree in a residential area compared to a, a bunch of trees in a, a far superior rural area, I imagine that you know the care and consideration that where they fall and how they fall is not nearly as much either. So the price probably changes dramatically. Yeah. Could be. It's hard to say. You know. Go ahead, Mayor. I think it all, it all depends on the price, uh, what's going to cost one way to the other. Uh, I think if we have, this is just my opinion, you take it for what it's worth. Uh, I think if they've already bid that and he said he's going to, you know, put that line in, let's put that line in, and then uh, if we want to, you know, work on that line in the next five years going down 19, or, uh, 98 there, you know, <coughs> we can do that. Uh, pick up the, the uh, OPWC grants and things and do a little bit here and a little bit there. I, I don't think it's... Uh, so I guess that's my opinion on it. So anybody on their own. Let's see what would it be up to the committee to go ahead and find out how much it's going to cost to clear these trees and maybe I don't know, do we have to have a piece of legislation to do that, or do we have to, I mean, because you're going to have to almost have a competitive bid to find out how much it costs to, to clear trees, and... Could we get, uh, uh, can, can we get a, can, could we get somebody just to give us, you know, like give us estimates on prepayment right. and everything? Yeah. Or, I mean, is that something that we just use existing city crew to do some of that, that clearing work and or is that not not really well I, I think we could probably do some of it it'd be the time frame of which it's going to get done and that's the problem yeah you know but if we could if we could just walk it and look at okay hey we count this many trees that we know we can't handle right then we could probably go out and get some quotes that'd be good um but i think the other thing would be to find out if, if i can have lynn come to the next meeting they see what he finds out about opwc and those kind of things for next year in 2020, then we could compile all that just to get an idea. I don't know about getting a tree. I might be able to get a count of trees by then if we think that we can't handle. And it might take time to clear it out, but over time, we could do sections each year if we choose to stay in that route to use that. And then it would eventually be cleared. This wouldn't be done yeah. right away. I mean, if this line's been around that long, and it just scares me that something happened to it. We got the other line coming to the town, so uh, just getting out there in the middle of nowhere to fix something is my concern. So, well, I was just going to say. I mean, I think give, give, I think we need to get more information before we really decide anything on this one. So, I'm kind of inclined to say, you know, let's recircle back on this in a 
Well, that's fine. And that's also the night before, just to get some input. So I knew which way to keep going. So. And so we can let the contractor know what we're doing. So as far as right now, he's put us off till fall. He's fine. Yeah. Uh, Steve Lynn here in two weeks. Uh, yeah, he said he should have his stuff around by then to be able to come on. Mr. Chairman, yes, we can, uh, if we can walk that, maybe take some pictures or a video and uh, maybe be able to present that in, in a future meeting. And so, have a, uh, you know, a more accurate idea of what it all looks like. And take a count, like Jeff said, but we can you know, certainly take a video too. So. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and run this at 644. So there's no need for a finance committee meeting, so we won't have that. Would you like to finish it out then, please, first? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> it's all you. I'd like her participation. I have oh, one question. Uh, I had three people call me, and two people at work asked me. We had that downpour yesterday, and Walnut, Mansfield, and Sandusky here have standing water. One of them asked me, do we have a, a um, protocol on if we're having a severe thunderstorm warning or forecast that we have somebody in the, either the street department or police department? And I don't know who, I'm just, I'm just I'll talk to head to be able to go out and put up you know, high water signs, just especially like yeah, here, Walnut, yes. and Dusty, and Mansfield. He, the one person said he came through Mansfield and luckily he had a big enough truck, he didn't have to worry about it, but he luckily he knew where to watch out for it, and there were people who didn't, and there was no signs of it. Well, I, I know we had somebody out, but I just, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure that they get the job done about putting the signs up. They were questioning why if we have protocol on that. I mean, what we typically we just bring somebody in to go around and make sure that the places are open, and especially where it's close. We get a call from the police department first. Yeah. Okay. I would go to the street department and then yeah. would send somebody out. So. Okay. They were asking, and I didn't know what I just wanted to ask. Okay, any more? Uh, okay. Uh, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.